Hello and welcome back to the 40k bunker. It's me, Oz, and today we're going to be building some killer cans. Uh, this is going to be a nice simple one, just from the standard killer can kit. Uh, you're not going to need really anything else apart from a little bit of plastic guard. So um, yeah, we're here. If you uh, wouldn't mind dropping a like and a subscribe in, that really helps out the channel. A little comment just saying, terrible video, Oz, don't ever do these again. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. Here's our box of Orc Killer Cans from Games Workshop. I opted for the Orc approach of opening this box by just going straight through the front of it. We don't need the instruction manual and we don't need all these bases and bits of bobs for now. And we'll start off just by selecting which of the three Killer Cans we want to use to start off with. Okay, so now I've selected which one I want to go with. And we just need to clip off all the parts for the main torso. So that'd be the front plate, the back plate, the two side pieces and the top hatch. Okay, so now what we're going to do is cut the front panel of the killer can off in line with the top of, there's like a square plate on the front, which gives a good guide from where to start the cut. And it just cuts it off nice and neat there. And that'll do just for cutting the front panel down. Okay, next what we're going to do is just cut this little lower half of the front panel off. That'll become relevant what we do with that later on, but it's just to kind of, it's easier to cut it off now while it's not attached to the rest of the body. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the back panel down. This one's really nice and easy. You've got some good guidelines here, and it's just cut it just in line with the bottom of the rectangular hole in the back where the engine would normally go. This is nice and easy. You can do this with a knife. It's not very thick plastic. Okay, so now that that's done, we can use it as a template to decide where we need to cut these side panels. Generally, it's just above the hip joint, but you can normally work that out by using the back panel that we cut down to work out exactly where that needs to be cut. But once you do cut it, it just needs to line up with the back of the torso. And there's like these little half circular parts on the back that it should all just line up with, but it'd take a little bit of trial and error, but it should be fine. So what we do is we just glue the side bits to the back bit in line with where they need to go. You can see that by just the circular elbow joints, elbow joints, shoulder joints. And then what we're gonna do is glue the lower half of the face plate to that. So then it should all line up and give you, it should all roughly be the right height for that. As you can see what, what it looks like now. Next, what we're gonna do is cut out a small square of, it's about one millimeter thick plaster card. And this is just going to do as the top panel and um, we'll do some more later as a bottom panel but for now we're just going to make this the top panel i use the relatively thick card because it makes it more like a very thick steel welded plate on the top and you can sort of like just rough cut it as it were so now what we've got is some slightly thinner plaster card and we're just going to use that on the bottom so I'm just rough cutting this and gluing it on because then we can cut out the correct shape of what the panel needs to be afterwards. But I'm just going to get it on, glue it, get it set, um, save you uh, cutting things down wrong. Now what we've got is the top hatch. We're just going to cut off the tag on the back of the top hatch because that's not needed anymore because that covers the what would be the engine on the back. So we don't need those and that can go. And then what we do is we get our front plate, the old like head part as it were from the front plate and glue that onto the top of the torso and then take the back plate that we cut off which actually would have been the lower half of the can's back and then glue that to the top plate as well and they should roughly work out at being the same height as each other just because you've taken off the same amount on both sides now just simply cut down the plastic card top and bottom that we put on earlier and that's easy, you can just cut it in line with the rest of the body, it gives it a lot like closer fit. It's relatively simple to do. Now that that's done, we'll take one of the standard engine pieces from the kit and just glue it together and then that should slot straight on the back because we haven't changed the size of the opening on the back, so that can just go straight in as normal. Okay, so now we're going to use the little leg joints that we had earlier and they can just glue straight to the bottom of the, the torso. That's, they just need a little bit of sanding down, but they should just go straight on. Now we're going to cut out some card just to fill the gaps on the sides of the, the head. There is some little like notches on the inside which are useful just to line the card up against, but I went with the thicker card again this time. It's about, oh, about one millimeter thick, maybe one millimeter, maybe a little bit more, 1.2, but it's about the same thickness as the rest of the plastic, so it works quite well just to kind of fill in this side gap and just do that on both sides. 
Now we're just going to use some of that thin plaster card that we used on the bottom just to make up the bottom of this head. Just push it over into one corner and then we can just trim it down like we did all the other parts. See, it's a lot easier to just glue these bits on and then trim them down afterwards because then you can make sure the shape is correct. Now that the head and the torso are mainly done, we're just going to move on to doing the legs. There's nothing special about the legs and feet on this one. All we're doing is just using the standard ones from the kit. They're fine. They work absolutely fine because we were making the torso slightly longer. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Not like the killer cam where we extended the feet a little bit and the legs. Uh, the, for this, we're just going to use the standard legs. Yeah, so fill the gap between the hip joints that we had from earlier. I found this small part that was part of, I believe it was the big shooter, and it just had the right curve in it to kind of line it all back up, so we're going to use that part. But we do need to cover the front and the back of it, so I just found some little bit of detailed plaster card for this, and just cut a piece the right kind of size to fit in. So just a little bit of thin plaster card from before, just to fill the gap at the back. And that's about that done. So now we go back to the top of the torso where the, I like to call them like the shoulders, they protrude up above the main torso. So what you end up with is the head will rest on them. So all we do here is you use a little bit of the really thin plaster card just to kind of bridge that gap between the two and make them look like they're a little bit more connected. And then instead of cutting anything particular, we just cut a small roundish shaped piece from the like one and a half mil thick plaster card and glued that onto the top. That's going to act as our sort of turntable pivot point for the top of the head. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on a weapon for him. I always like to do guns before arms because it works a lot better. For this one, we're going to be building what I like to call like the little Mac 10 Uzi style big shooter that I like to equip the cans with. This is just more of a tutorial how to make these. I use them on death dreads, all sorts of bits and bobs, but they're really fun to do. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but as you can see, this is just standard Imperial Guard heavy bolter from the Cadian heavy weapon team. They're really nice little guns. They're quite bulky in ways and they, they're just really chonky. We're gonna start off by gluing some little U-shaped channel plaster card to the bottom of it, to just make the bottom of the heavy bolter a bit flatter for connection points of different bits. I've added a little bit of plaster card as well to that. And now next what we got is this like larger u-shaped channel it's about well i'm not sure how big it is it's about six or seven mil wide i think it is maybe six mil and this is going to act as the the hand grip for the gun and the magazine well and then that little bit of card we added on earlier just allows us to have a larger connection point for that bit to glue on to so next we're going to work on the magazine we've gone back to our standard u-shaped channel I'd recommend just buying loads of this because it's brilliant stuff to use and filler and use for all sorts of different stuff. And what we're going to do is we're just going to glue two little lengths of that, or one to start off with, to this little upright. It's actually going to end up being the base, but we're just going to glue that to the bottom and that's going to form the base of the magazine. Now what we're going to do is we've got this little tiny little plastic, plastic card rod and we're just going to cut out loads and loads and loads of little bits of that because this is going to make up what looks like the ammunition in the belt. And now once you've got a load of those, you might as well make them longer than they need to be because we can cut those down again afterwards. But what we're going to do is we're just going to glue all of those into this upright for the magazine. It's a bit fiddly and trying to get them all to line up and be straight, but you'll get there in the end. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cut them down and you're not actually going to see that much of these. Okay, so now that they were glued, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep trimming down and cutting the bullets out of the magazine to make sure that it fits in the magwell that we made. And this is just a process where you just slowly chip, chip off a little bit, test it, take a bit off, test it, and just take off a little bit each time. But it's easy to cut off with just the clippers. And it took a couple of attempts to get this the right size. Sometimes you need to file the edges of the magwell out a little bit, but it should be fine. You can just cut it down. Okay, so now that the mag has been trimmed and fits, what we're gonna do is just gonna make a little trigger, which is just some of the hexagon rod that we've used before in previous builds. And then we're just gonna make a little little nubbin to go on the end and then that'll make our trigger you can have it i just have it pushed down all the time just because it's easier and then all we need to do is fill the back of the magwell and that's uh, pretty much done with this so if any of you see my other tutorial on the death dread we're going to do a similar thing here with the hands but we're just going to simplify them a bit for this one what i've done is i've got this little kind of two millimeter by two meter plastic rod 
and I've just cut off some small sections of that and then just glued them to some hexagon shaped tubing. What we'll do just now, just cut off the excess because it's always easier to just glue on the excess. So now we've got some little little square fingery bits with a little hexagon bit at the end. Now we're just going to cut those off on a, an around a 45 degree angle. You can be as neat as you want with this, but time constraints and trying to do it on a video, I'm just doing it roughly. Now what we're going to do is the bits that we've just cut off, we're just going to turn them around and glue them straight back on again to give the hands a sort of, uh, the fingers sort of like a 45 degree angle to them in the middle. Uh, on some of the other ones I built, I used, it was like a grabber claw from the Grotz kit, like it was the Grot Herder. He has this little staff with a grabber on it. I've used some of those before previously on this, but there's only so many of those you can have. So uh, sort of run out of those. So I'm just building them myself now. All right, while those fingers are gluing, we're just gonna have a look at some arms to start off with. And I went with this one that was on the same set of sprues. So this was the big shooter arm, but it's quite a nice little compact, neat arm. So we're gonna move that, that one first. All right, we're gonna find some bits to do the hands now. So I've chosen this saw blade because it came off the same sprue. So that's always good, keeping to the same kit. And uh, I chose that one because it's got quite a nice flat area behind the ball joint. So we can cut all that away later. Then we're gonna have a look for some tubing that will fit the ball joint the same so we just want it so it slots like just inside not all the way in but we'll just go just inside of it we're going to cut two of them off because obviously we're going to need one for each hand so now what we've done is just got a little bit of this square plaster card just to try and bulk out the arm length a little bit this is sort of just placeholder mainly at the minute we might end up having to cut this down when we realize the arms are too long but for now we're just going to add this on because it just figure out the posing situation where the guns are going to be, how he's going to hold the gun. So we just need to get one sorted at least and then we can work back on it later. So I'm just detailing this arm extension at the minute, but you can do this however you want, but I just find it easier just to get it mostly there for now. So I'll just leave you with that. Right, so let's go back to the fingers for a minute. Let's just straighten these out. We can cut a little bit extra off just to get the finger length the same and then just glue on some of that hexagon rod again that we've been using previously in all the other builds. Just give that, it just gives us time to let that dry because you saw in the last video, fiddling around with it while the uh, glue's still setting, it's just a nightmare. So you've got to leave it for a good while. Okay, so we're gonna cut the ball joint off that chainsaw hand whirly gig wheel thing that we uh, got earlier. And we're just gonna tidy it up a little bit because we don't need all of it. All right, so the big shooter hand, the big shooter that we made earlier, we're not gonna need because I actually wanted to do a different weapon on this guy. So this is where I show you something I prepared earlier. I built this off camera because I didn't actually know how I was going to build it and it took several attempts to do it. So this is what I like to call the Grot Blaster. It's a part of an exhaust plus the Pyrrhal Guard Tarox Battle Cannon thing for the turret plus some other little bits off the Orky Sprue but I wanted it to look sort of like brake barrel grenade launcher style thing. Something to represent the 18 inch range you know blast uh, kind of capability of it which I thought a little grenade launcher sounds just about right to me. So now we've just glued the ball joint onto it. All right, there's these couple of little bits on the front. We're just gonna cut those off. That's where the original um, horns went. There was like these horn spikes that stick out the front. Uh, we're just gonna cut those off and cover them over with some card. Otherwise you'll find that they're just getting in the way. They just clash with the gun. Um, and now we can sort of start figuring out where our arms are gonna sit and then whether they're too long or too short. And this is a good time, as you can see what I did here is I flipped over to the left arm just to see whether this arm will work best on the left or the right. And this part is all just about positioning really. Because of the way the torso now is, I know that these legs aren't gonna fit straight onto these ball joints. So what I've done is just clipped off a little bit of plastic card tubing just to act as sort of like a spacer on the hip and uh, just glued that into the socket. And then we can just let that dry and then do the other one. And then that should give the legs a little bit of more positioning, uh, a little bit of freedom of movement without them snagging against the bottom of the torso just, to, just on top of the hips. Right, so to sort final positioning of the gun, what we really need to do is sort out the final positioning of the body on the base. So we're gonna glue the feet on and then get our arms and, uh, not arms, glue the legs on and glue the feet onto the base so we can leave that to set for a little while. And we're also just gonna glue the head on because I know roughly what direction I want the head looking. As you can see, I've glued a little bit of that uh, round plaster card into the shoulder joints as well just to spring the arms out a little bit you don't really notice it once the top of the arms glued in but that gives you an idea of sort of spacing them out a bit and i'm just going to glue this one arm on because i know roughly where i want it to be 
while that arm's gluing we're just gonna have a look at maybe adding some shoulder pads just to hide the shoulders up uh, I quite like these little square ones I actually really do like the ones that come in the killer can kit there's some quite nice shoulder pads in the flash kits kit that you can use on these that they you think they'd be too small but they're not they actually work really well on these right so we're gonna go back to my old trick that we did with the death dread where it's just make this like sort of tower of blue tack to work out this positioning of the gun I find it really helps to kind of just keep everything stable while the glue sets and it just means that you can work on the other arm without having to worry about you know breaking it or interrupting its position or its position changing it tends to hold it there quite nicely because it's relatively light so doing my best to stick to the same kit we're going to move on to the other arm i cho just chose this one because it was fine it was on the same kit obviously you can have a rummage round in the sprues if you want to and just change the ones you want but this one's kind of the right length straight off the sprue so we're gonna go with that one we'll just clip away all the excess bits that we don't need like the hydraulics and pistons and stuff because they're all just going to get in the way they're a bit bulky so we'll get rid of all of those i didn't really have to do any altering on this arm at all it just seemed to it just worked but i glued my little piece of tubing onto the end just for the ball joint to sit into but yeah it didn't have to do too much work on this one so that was nice okay so what we've got here is like a little bit of an i-beam that i cut into sort of like a t-shape and just glued that straight onto the ball joint that's going to give us something to work away from when we do the fingers supporting the gun okay so we're just going to add a little exhaust on and we'll do some little bits just some detailing on the back i'll have used some of these little flamer tanks just to detail the back up but it's up to you what you add on the back here i just do one exhaust because i like just having one right so we're just going to carry on with the fingers that we made from earlier the fingers on the other arm were just built in exactly the same way you see i've got some little squares of plaster card which are going to make up the tips of the fingers so i'm just trying to get these these are just getting glued on uh, just a little bit more detailing on the back panel but the fingers are one of those things you want to glue and leave them to set for like a good half an hour or so just mean that it's just not constantly falling apart while you're trying to work with it so now we can just glue the little blocks that i made for the ends of the fingers and then we can try and get that glued on to the bottom of the gun and then we can just sort of hold it for a while while the rest of the arm sets and those fingers set so as the fingers are set in they were just really fiddly to get in there they're such a small piece just using some little tweezers or something to move stuff about just makes it a little bit easier but yeah, then we're just gonna go on and add our shoulder pad, and then we're pretty much there, really. And there you have it, one killer can slash sentinel, whatever you want him to be. All right, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I built loads of these killer cans, so I really enjoyed building them. Like I said before, nice and simple. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing you next time.